Random Monday nights in January don't typically provide us with memorable games. I raised an eyebrow when I noticed that TNT was broadcasting the Cavs-Wizards game nationally. And I also got excited since I had just done a breakdown on the Wizards, spotlighting the Kelly Oubre lineup that has been a killer for them. This was a great chance to see where the Wizards stood, since their meteoric rise from a poor start had vaulted them to fourth in the conference. Right away, we had some very interesting storylines. Very quietly, Otto Porter has been having a great year and leading the league in three-point shooting, while news came out during the game that LeBron is actively trying to get Kevin Love traded to the Knicks for Carmelo Anthony. So let's get right to the footage and see how this unfolded. Kevin Love had a huge night, and on the switch of the pick and roll, they isolated him on Otto Porter, who really can't handle him down there. Love's versatility was on full display as he spots up on the step-up screen for LeBron. Great pass on the money for the easy three. In his signal of all the craziness to come, we got this John Wall drive when he grew impatient with the floppy set. Then watch Kevin Love throw his patented long pass from out of bounds. But it gets stolen, then stolen right back in one motion, and Kyrie finishes the tough runner. Wow. LeBron got into the act early with this run out and when nobody gets in front of him, he just rises up and yams over everybody. On this wall drive, he forces Kevin Love to have to rotate. Thompson is in position to pick up Gortat and Chumpert needs to split the difference between Beal and Porter. However, those two both move to the same spot, yet Chumpert stares at the ball and gets way too low. The closeout is too far away, and Porter shows us all why he's got the highest three-point percentage in the league. Last week, we broke down a new wrinkle to the pick and roll we're calling Spain, and the Wizards break it out when Beal backscreens Gortat's man. Gortat, in turn, is setting the ball screen. Kyrie gets confused, thinking he needs to pick up Gortat, when it's really the ball he should be concerned with, but Wall doesn't wait, cramming it through the rim. The transition defense of the Cavaliers has been terrible all season long. And watch how Kyrie should be following Porter to the corner, but instead goes to the ball even though Shumpert is already there. Nice passing, good look, and the splash. The Cavaliers broke out the reverse elevator for us. Where Jefferson gets a double screen, he slides between them like elevator doors. Normally it's a cut away from the basket for a three, but the Cavs flipped it and they get a dunk and a standing ovation from me. LeBron had a career high in assists with 17, and on this fast break, Wall can't just be calling out for someone to pick up Thompson, he needs to do it. Instead, it's an alley-oop. As the Wizards were trying to take control of this game, they let the Cavs back in it when Markeith Morris gets the board and foolishly outlets it to a shocked Marcin Gortat, and this turns into another assist for LeBron that allowed the Cavs to stay close. It was clear the Wizards wanted to push the pace as fast as possible, which just isn't how the Cavs can play at an optimal level. And you can see the result as LeBron gets completely exhausted to the point where he needed a timeout to catch his breath. When the Wizards are really cooking, they're getting wall pick and rolls and making the extra pass. Watch Gortat get up in the air before firing a difficult pass to Morris. Kyrie never rotated and Beal gets the wide open corner three. Shumpert also made real defensive mistakes, opting to go under the screens while guarding Beal. This leads to a wide open three here, and then he tries to go underneath the Gortat screen and Beal gets another wide open three. Thompson learned well from the Warriors of a couple of years ago how to set screens by getting contact, then backing up a step. This gets Wall off of Kyrie, who attacks. Watch how Wall doesn't exert any effort to try and get back in the play, and it leads to the easy tip dunk. Morris then hurts the Wizards again, as they were about to get real separation. First, with this silly foul on the screen, and then, on this duck in for LeBron, he correctly rotates onto Thompson, but then leaves him all alone under the hoop to go get his man that's 30 feet away. The Wizards ran Spain again here, and this time, watch how the Cavs adjusted. They switched to get Chumpert on Gortat. When the back screen comes up, they can switch again, and now the opening isn't there for Wall to drive. He does find the skip to Morris, but he hurts the cause with this air ball on an open look. Down three, there is no need to jack an early three off the pick and roll, especially from John Wall, who's shooting a sub-optimal 31% from behind the arc. 
This directly leads to a quick rebound and push from LeBron. Again, nobody stops the ball, and he gets the and one in transition. And the fantastic plays started popping up again. Like this push of the ball by LeBron into a fall away over the head skiff bullet right to Love, who lets it fly from deep. The referees were a factor with some strange calls all night. None more strange than giving Tristan Thompson a technical for screaming swear words at his own bench. Of course, the question begs to be asked, why would Thompson be cursing to the bench like this? I might be way off base here, but perhaps he said something derogatory about Kevin Love, who had fallen down on the play and given up an open three that missed. I can't figure out what else it could be, but the tech was not rescinded. At the end of the third, Kyrie makes a mistake in letting Wall roll the ball into the front court, saving precious seconds. But check out this move Wall gives him. Inside out crossover with the left, crossover again, and the up and around the Kevin Love defense for the layup. Wow. I also noticed that Washington isn't shy about going right at LeBron, and was successful too. Morris posted him up for a score earlier, and Beal wasted no time getting him in the lane and knocking down a step back. Kelly Oubre was a real spark, just like we showed in our video from two weeks ago, and he continually got pick six deflections. However, he couldn't quite get the loose ball against LeBron. Somehow, this becomes a three-pointer for Kyle Korver when the Cavs were able to regain the attack. Going into the timeout, Brooks calls out all three referees for not making this call against LeBron for pushing Oubre off. While he may have had a point, it was a very bad time to be giving the Cavs anything for free. Unless you think these two teams weren't taking the game seriously, first, they were breaking out all their best sets, and second, check out the hustle by Porter to knock the ball out of bounds, preventing a surefire two points. Remember the call Brooks argued and then got a technical foul for? Well, LeBron gets whistled for an offensive foul on this ridiculousness, and it's clear to me this was a makeup call for the one they missed in the backcourt earlier. Oubre continued to be active, and he finished with a team high plus nine by continually moving and finding the openings. When LeBron got stuck guarding two guys, Beal finds Oubre for the end one. Love got back to work, again taking Porter down low for the nice turnaround fadeaway. And with even lighter Oubre on him, he gets his ballet shoes on, and then this phantom call with a great touch to get it to drop for the and one. LeBron struggled defensively for a lot of the game, so when Kyrie inexplicably comes over to shadow wall behind Thompson, it looked like he actually wanted Thompson to switch with him, which is a ridiculous idea while Thompson's actually guarding the ball. LeBron has Gortat, but then decides to leave him to chase Morris out top, leaving the opening for an awesome pass by Wall and the finish by Marchin. I'm telling you, the Wall-Irving matchup is the best thing going, and these two were going at each other all night. As the game moved into the stretch, LeBron suddenly caught fire from downtown. This one is tough, having interrupted his rhythm before rising up into a three that caught Porter by surprise. The Wall Beal pick and roll is one of the deadliest actions they have because Wall is so fast and Beal is a good shooter on the pop. Thompson is there to help, but Wall is too good. Tie game, baseline out of bounds, and a simple cut to the wing finds LeBron some space. I'm sure Otto Porter is happy to let him shoot these, but he ignited to go 6 for 8 from back there. But Beal was up to matching him with this little backdoor cut, stop, break back out off the Morris screen, then catch and shoot splash. Tie game and the Wizards invite the double team off the pick and roll. They find Gortat on the short roll. Korver went from good pressure to being woefully out of position because he's slow. Three guys rotate to the penetration, only one was needed, and that leaves Porter wide open for the corner three. LeBron can't be outmatched as he calls for his own pick and roll, finds a little space out top, and pulls before Gortat can get out there. For the first time, I saw the Spain pick and roll ran for a turnover. Even though it starts off okay, Love hustles well to get back to the dump off pass, and it triggers a Cavs run out. Once Korver gets the ball in the corner, there isn't much the Wizards can do. The Cavs continued pulling out clever sets, like this Iverson series. Watch how Kyrie gets the pass and immediately drives it while Thompson sets a screen for LeBron. Porter defends this well, LeBron reads this perfectly and cuts back door. Good rotation by Morris to pick him up in the post. However, Beal didn't split the difference between the two weak side players, and Love is all by himself for another huge three. Looking to ice the game up by three, LeBron gets to the hoop only to be blocked by Gortat at the rim. 
A terribly risky pass by Beal somehow makes it across court to Wall. The Wizards push, and there's Beal to tie the game on the trailing three, and this game is officially bonkers. The Cavs spread pick and roll, and once LeBron gets inside the three-point arc, Wall should be breaking off to stay with Thompson. Instead, he gets to the rim and they put him on the free throw line. Down one, we get more Wall versus Irving on the ISO, and Wall gets right by into the hoop. Love is late on the help, Thompson challenges, but it's LeBron who simply does not box out at all, allowing Morris to grab the board and put it back to take the lead. And this got crazy. Watch LeBron come down and get a tackle, I mean ball screen from Kyrie. Wall is in no position to stop the freight train, but LeBron takes a few too many steps. Incredibly, the refs don't call it. But I suspect LeBron knew he traveled, and this is why he lost concentration and blew the layup. And what should have been the game. Watch it again. I'd say the right step is the gather, then you have the left, right, left, right. Even if you want to give him one more step as a gather, then it's still right, left, right, three steps. And Tony Brothers was right there with a perfect view of it too. Wall does his part by hitting both free throws, and this should have been it. Certainly when you're up by three with such little time left and the Cavaliers have no timeouts left, it's a no-brainer to simply follow the player if he's in the front court before he can take the shot. But the Wizards coaching staff clearly did not alert the players to do this, and as a result, Love throws a laser down court, LeBron catches it with Beal on him, every chance to foul him, but instead LeBron does this. While this was definitely a lucky shot, LeBron is too good a player to let him get the shot off in the first place. Beal had two opportunities to foul him before he even got to the three-point line, and amazingly LeBron kept that right foot in bounds. All wasn't lost as the Wizards had just enough time to run a play, and it was a clever one. While it looked like they might screen for Morris to run to the rim, it was Kyrie Irving who gets in the exact wrong position and allows a free cut to the rim to Wall. But Porter's pass was off target and we end up in overtime. I thought the Wizards might give up at this point after the deflating end to regulation, but they came out on fire. They get Kyrie on Gortat in the pick and roll, and watch how Kyrie foolishly decides to close to the corner, leaving Gortat all alone to lay it up. And the next possession, on the inbounds, they catch LeBron hacking for his sixth foul, and things look very good for Washington. Up two, the Wizards run a nice wall Beal pick and roll. Gortat then flare screens for Beal. This turns into one more screen. Gortat on the short roll forces Thompson to rotate, leaving Oubre to give them a huge five-point lead. But the Wizards' luck ran out, as an open three from Kyrie misses, but goes right to Love on the long rebound. Love should have turned this ball over, but John Wall doesn't pick anybody up in the scramble. The ball ends up in Korver's hands, and he buries the triple. The game is tied, and watch how Beal doesn't get back in position on defense until it's too late. Kyrie gets a step on him, and he's at the rim, putting it in. John Wall keeps the Wizards close by getting another Beal ball screen and getting the call when Love leans over too much trying to get the charge. You can see how Love had to lean into Wall to get the contact. Good call and a three-point play. A foolish play by Oubre on the weak side as he sticks his butt into Love and this just gives the Cavs the lead back for nothing. Another mistake by Kyrie to allow the ball to be rolled to half court. Beal's ball screen gets a hedge by Cal Korver, who has no hope getting back in time, and Beal just buries the three for a two-point lead. Kyrie gets sickening on this move, as he does the fake pickup crossover, but Beal stays right with him, so he goes behind the back, pull up at the baseline, contact, and still hits the clutch shot. Kyrie wants another shot at Beal, and this time he sizes him up and just pulls from three, in a pretty familiar looking three at the end of the game, wouldn't you say? With plenty of time, the Wizards smartly attack quickly as Gortat destroys Kyrie in the pick before rolling for the wide open layup to cut it to one. Needing only one stop to get a chance to win, Kyrie snakes to the rim but misses the shot. However, his drive forced Gortat to rotate, leaving Beal down low on Thompson, who was able to knock the ball back to a teammate, the Wizards have to foul, and the end was near. Down three, the Wizards curiously let Beal be the primary ball handler instead of Wall. And guess what? The Cavs didn't foul up by three either when they absolutely should have. Beal ended up with a pretty darn good look at this three, and the Cavs dodge a bullet as the shot doesn't drop. All I can say is that this would make for a tremendous playoff series, and as Jan Mahimi inches closer to getting back on the court, 
There is no question in my mind that the Wizards have the best chance of beating the Cavs in the playoffs. Let us all hope and pray that we do in fact get this matchup.